We have watched, we have waited, in hope for peace and joy with love. Now our redemption draws near. Glory to God in the highest. Alleluia. Amen.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. with you. Let us pray. O God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we, who have known the mystery of that light on earth, may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. So the first reading on this Christmas Eve comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 52. 
How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Bring forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, for the reading of Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm, he has won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, sing. Sing to the Lord with harp, with the harp and the voice of song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world, and the peoples with equity. The second reading comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 1. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom we appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For which the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And again, he brings the firstborn into the world. He says, let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he said, he makes his angels winds and his servants flames of fire. But of the son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever and the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish but you remain. They will all wear out like clothing. Like a cloak, you will roll them up, and like clothing, they will be changed. But you are the same. You are, you and your ears will never end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. Light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and in the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. 
And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Some years ago, as I led an adult education class on an intuitive Bible study of Advent and Christmas characters, a remarkable thing happened. From a pile of 21 index cards, I had handed out index cards with the name of an Advent Christmas character on one side and a random number on the other side. I handed these out, one to a person. Participants did not see the name of the character, but only the random number on the card. They were to form an impression of whoever it was on the card, simply by focusing on the card and the number for about 30 seconds. When it was one of the women's turn, she said, I'm tired and dusty, and my feet are sore, and I'm tired of walking. She turned over her card and found the name, the Virgin Mary. So I am concluding that it's possible for any of us, either through impressions or other associations, to gain a sense of being there in even any given story. All to say that at Christmas we find such experiences more common. The mechanics of familiarizing are all around us. Every time we drive by a nativity scene, we read the story again. Every time we encounter certain music, we encounter Bethlehem again. In addition, we carry a familiarity with that story in our hearts and our minds. The memories are there. I think it would be fair to say that in our associations with the story of Bethlehem, there is a Christmas magic that emanates from a sense of being there. And in fact, the story itself, without our associations, is soaked in what I would call a convergent magic. This tired and dusty Mary with her sore feet and Joseph converged on Bethlehem to find no room in the inn. Luke is very careful to spell out the details of their arrival and preparation for the manger. There's a tremendous sense of anticipation and preparation. The shepherds were afraid of angels who spoke to them and sang to them from the sky and told them to go to Bethlehem. So they too converged on the manger. After Mary and Joseph had arrived and the child born, and as the shepherds neared the manger, the convergent magic and anticipation gives way to a holy quiet and to a slowly emanating joy. Perhaps the best symbol of all that is, is the star that shone overhead. In our contemplation of the holy atmosphere of Christmas, I think we will find that all of the figures in that story, even the objects in the story, are infused with that sense of convergent magic holy quiet and joy. And I think you would agree that we who encounter the story in sight and sound ourselves become infused with that convergent magic, holy quiet and joy. And we are so infused with the story that we and the landscape of our lives become softer and more beautiful. Over the years, we have tried to enhance that sense of magic and quiet by adding other figures to it little drummer boys, various breeds of animals. The basic figures in the scene have been enhanced countless times with colored lights and many, many other embellishments. This year with the pandemic, perhaps we wonder how in the world could Christmas be uplifting in the middle of all this coronavirus. But I suspect that the basic spiritual exercise of Christmas this year as in other years, is how much we allow ourselves to be infused with that convergent magic, that holy quiet, that joy. The convergent magic, the holy quiet, the joy, the silent night of Bethlehem extends and lends itself to our hearts in these days. And there is Christmas magic in our being together online and our loving each other. It may be that you would want to preserve this spirit of Christmas and perhaps find a way for it to be more illuminating, to illuminate who you are and what you do. 
So I would say, find more times and ways to walk with tired and dusty Mary and Joseph. Find more time to listen to the angels, with the shepherds, and to go to Bethlehem with them. But most of all, I would say, be the star and shine with the love and the joy of Christ as never before. Beloved friends, Christ is born. Amen. Please join me in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified in a Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are found in your service leaflet. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for Ezo, South Sudan. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Redeemer, Anstead, St. Andrews, Oak Hill, and for our companion diocese in Columbia. We give thanks for the birthdays of Gil Watkins and Holly Mitchell, and for the anniversaries of David and Marilyn Ford, Nikki and Jason Barnett, and John and Lee Ada Dorsey. Grant that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael Curry, the presiding bishop, Bishop Klusmeyer, Charles, our priest, and Gina, our postulant. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for the president, the president-elect, Supreme Court, and Congress. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. We pray for first responders, health care workers, those on our parish prayer list, and for those you named silently or aloud. We also ask you, Lord, for protection from coronavirus and have compassion on those who suffer from that or from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. We lift up those who have died, especially those we have lost to coronavirus and for those you name silently or aloud. 
Give to the departed eternal rest and let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord, hear the prayers of your people and what we have asked faithfully. Grant that we may obtain effectually the glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Please exchange a peace with those you're with right now. May the comfort of God's peace be with you. Wishing you a very Merry Christmas, and may the peace of the Lord, which comes from this season, given to us in the birth of Jesus Christ, be with you now and always. The peace of the Lord. We welcome you to this Christmas Eve Eucharist uh, at St. Mark's Episcopal Church in St. Albans, West Virginia. We welcome those who are viewing locally in the St. Albans, West Virginia area, and also those who are tuning in from away, from a different state, across the country somewhere. We welcome you uh, particularly. I'm uh, glad to hear from you at some point. If you make a comment on my Facebook page, we'd be glad to receive that. Just to let us know that you're here, what you think about our services. Um, in the way of announcements, uh, online views continue this week uh, as normal. Um, there is uh, no Compline on uh, Christmas Day evening, not tomorrow evening, Friday evening. This that's the only change. Otherwise, the daily office uh, schedule is the same. Um, online views for the week of December 13th as of December 21st. A Monday, December 14th, evening prayer, 18 views. Wednesday, December 16th, morning prayer, 58 views. Wednesday, December 16th, evening, evening prayer, 100 views. Friday, December 18th, Compline, 49 views. And last Sunday, Eucharist, December 20th, 64 views. As you can see, uh, we are back on the YouTube pre-recorded service. Our internet's working again. We thank God for that. Uh, and then uh, just to, to run over the announcements quickly, reopening is deferred indefinitely until a safer time. Um, and otherwise, um, we're hoping that you are doing well in these coronavirus days. Uh, we need to, I think, particularly be in um, awareness of our people in California and the population centers out there where the hospitals are just overrun with people who are sick. Uh, let's be in prayer for those first responders, those health care workers, and those victims out there in California, for sure. Um, what a hard time for them. And other parts of the country, too, I'm aware, but uh, uh, they're the ones who are in the news the most, I think. Ascribe to the Lord, the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is a right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, Bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. Now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you, and remain with you always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.